Hello Sapiens, uh, welcome to our YouTube channel Fire and Ice, Exploring the Cosmos. Today we're going to discuss about the importance of fiction reading. I've been reading actively, reading actively for almost a decade. I used to stick to different genres and different sorts of books in every phase, varies from self-help to fiction, literature, memoirs, biographies, etc. I started off my reading journey with fictional novels. But the joy I get when I read fiction is absolutely unparalleled. The environment it gets created and the page to eye and the word coordination evokes the mental memories and I always feel mentally stimulated. Actually, in my case, fiction helped me liberate from my own experience as a human being so far. It helped me understand the feelings of Humbert in Lolita, otherwise which I would never want to comprehend. It gave me an amazement to find out who committed the murders in Agatha Christie's and then there were none at the last. It informed me about the philosophy of Santiago somewhere in North Cuba through Mingwe's uh, Old Man at the Sea. I understood the tenderness of a first kiss between Pip and Estella when I read Great Expectations. I remember distinctly becoming desolate and void of any emotion for days after learning about Catherine as Earnshaw in Wuthering Heights. I realized that I could be any of them while I was reading them and a part of me became all of them once I finished reading them. My troposphoric pounds have increased every time I added a fictional book to my library power. If I have to simply put all the things that I have said as the characters grew on me, I think I grew in turn with the books I read. Um, there are a lot of advantages. We can, a lot of traits you can develop. Uh, if you can think about imagination and creativity, something like uh, uh, it gets developed while reading fiction, right? Fiction improves your imagination yes. by presenting all the readers with new and different scenarios, settings and characters that they may not have encountered in their everyday life. That's the, the exact, uh, you know, uh, journey you have mentioned sometime back uh, in your experience, right? By engaging mm. with these fictional elements, readers are forced to use their imagination to picture them in their minds. Whereas in self-help books, not, not, I mean, nothing against self-help books, but it's like a prescription thing, right? It's like a, it's like something, mm. hey, uh, A, B, B, Z, uh, it's like you're following some something. They're, it's not mentally challenging to think through. Uh, I've read Harry Potter books in the past too, uh, and I've seen the films mm. as well. Uh, the books, the detailing in the books are, I mean, that's mind boggling. You know, the way you create your, uh, you again, you know who the Harry Potter is, but then the back of the mind, you create the world uh, in your imagination, something quite ma massively impacted my imagination. You know, this exercise in imagination can lead to improved creativity thinking, um, empathy, problem solving skills. Additionally, you know, fiction also often encourages readers to think critically about social issues, uh, as we talked about, and to, and to consider alternative perspectives and solutions. I'd like to add the point uh, when you were talking about imagination yes. that uh, during my childhood, yes. I had this uh, book about the adventures of Ulysses, you know, as a non-detail and yes. the story of Ulysses and Cyclops right. named Polyphemus that intrigued me the most. It fascinated me to think of a one-eyed huge giant, right, who was uh, in a huge cave. The generation of Cyclops that I had when I was reading that, you know, no picture or video that you'll find on the internet today, you will get that imagination, you know, it, it cannot be equal to that. It is far greater imagination that you can have of the character in your mind. You know, the same goes with the depiction of, you know, Hound in the Hound of Baskervilles, where they say that there is a spectral beast. Yeah, and in the end, they say that the eyes were coated with phosphorus. And even, you know, the mechanical hound, the description of mechanical hound in Fahrenheit 451. I think when you read a book, it helps you pick, choose and customize one particular model by applying a change of constraints that you might have through a visual or an audio medium. Perfect too is that, you know, it helps to understand the characters, which you would normally even refuse to acknowledge or accept. Like, I'll give you an example, uh, you know, I somehow related or empathized, empathized with, you know, this character in uh, Inferno, uh, written by Dan Brown, uh, the main uh, villain, the antagonist called Petran Zoprist. You know, if I would have met that person in real life, if you would have heard about him, I would have simply uh, taken him away. I wouldn't have taken him seriously. I would have labeled him as an extremist. But then somehow, when I was reading into the book, I was invested in him. I sort of, you know, understood him and which made me help, you know, at least empathize with the character. So I think reading a book sort of helps you, you know, develop compassion and empathize with the characters that you wouldn't uh, normally empathize with. Fiction uh, take readers on an emotional journey and help them empathize with characters, mm -hmm. situations and perspectives that may not have encountered in real life, right? So what you said absolutely makes sense. It develops a better understanding of themselves and even us, ourselves too, as well as the world around them. So so yeah, I, I, I see uh, your point there. Uh, compassion and empathy, yes, of course, it's, it's right on point. <laughs> Say that fiction improves your cognitive ability. There are several researchers mm. that are saying that by engaging the brain in a way that encourages it to make connection, analyze information, again, think critically, 
when we read fiction we are presented with some complex scenarios characters plots mm-hmm. you know that require us to use our imagination to fill in the gaps and make sense of what we are reading right so this process of continuous visualization interpretation helps to strengthen neural connections in the brain which can improve our uh, kind of ability to process and retain information think creatively solve problems researchers in a 2013 study investigated a concept called the need for cognitive closure what it means is which refers to the inclination to quickly reach conclusions and avoid ambiguity and confusion you know individuals with high need for cognitive closure tend to rely heavily on initial information struggle to change their beliefs which presented uh, with new information and generate fewer alternative hypotheses you know it's like only one closed approach or one closed perspective so leading to over confidence in their initial perspectives but on the other hand those with lower levels of cognitive closure tend to be more thoughtful creative and comfortable with considering multiple perspectives it's like not there's not only the one answer but there are several right answers along with the what point that you're talking about the cognitive closure i feel actually you know it connects to the uh, uh, inferno point where you know it made me open my mind to understand you know where a person like uh, bertrand zobrist is coming from in the first place or even you know peek into the mind of uh, you know this uh, character in lolita right has shown that reading fiction is more effective and re- at reducing stress than listening to music mm-hmm. sipping tea walk taking a walk in fact stress levels were shown to be reduced by 68% after 6 minute of everyday reading you know it's like oh my god that's mm-hmm. ju- that's just what you need it right while your brain is yeah. engaged in a story your heart rate slows down muscles relax just what you said because there is so much work for your brain to do reading is very effective way to focus your energy and improve your concentration fictional book is not actually any other book that you have in your hand it is actually the invitation from a person who grew up in a society altogether different from yours giving you a chance to have a peek into his imaginary world you know of culture and traditions customs and relationships it gives you indirect knowledge on his personal experiences of the world around him and also it gives a direct insight or wisdom of how the world around him has perceived him or treated him in short it is the most authentic interaction you can ever have with a human being in this cosmos wow that's nice i want to add uh, maybe a little plug in like fiction is not the opposite of reality but rather a tool that helps shape it.